there is a crash in the guest feature thing when I try to turn on system audio. Oh. So. That's why we're still testing it. Yeah, it's not quite ready. I don't know if we have anyone watching anymore. But, uh... Oh, we lost your Nikon. There it is. Yeah, I'm trying to switch. There we go. All right, we have a couple people watching on on YouTube at least. I think people are still Thank on you. Facebook. Yeah. Why don't we just explain it with words? Yeah. So we are back. Uh, so as we had mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, we're running kind of a development version of this app, and it seems like there's a crash in the uh, when I try to share the screen. So we're not going to do that anymore. Um, and here's a good question. The uh, uh, Mateo is asking about the, the fact that it's creating a new stream on YouTube. It's because we're using Restream. Uh, Restream doesn't really have a resume ability, per se, uh, unless you set it up to specifically go to a broadcast. Uh, by default, it's just going to create a new stream. If, Why don't we just by, if by some strange chance you can live were to crash on you, or your computer were to reboot or something like that, and you opened it back up and you were not using Restream, it will ask you automatically, would you like to resume? this broadcast, and it'll pick back up where it left off. But the way we have it set up right now with Restream, it's not, um, it doesn't do that. Thanks for joining us, John Eric. I see that the diehards are sticking with us. Uh, Sean's here. Joe's here. We got Brian. We have some people watching, so should we get right back into this, Ken? Yeah. Um, uh, we were just talking about the fact that we are we are um, kind of testing a development build, and that's why it has some issues. Um, it has nothing to do with what's released right now. Let's get back to talking about what's actually released right now. Well, um, actually, we were on that question about the comments. So okay. to that question, if you do want to make your comment window larger, you just have to grab the corner and drag it wider. And as you drag it wider, the, um, the text will actually get bigger. So you can actually have, it's very tiny by default. Uh, the text will grow as you widen that window. So if you bring it out on, even onto a second display, and then you widen it all the way to fill that display, you'll see actually some text that's probably large enough to read across the room. So kind of a mm -hmm. neat way to bring your comments in is to put them on an external monitor and just blow up that window to the full size of the monitor, and you'll be able to see your, your, uh, your comments very easily. Nice. Nice. And we, we do actually have a lot of questions coming in about using Ecamm to broadcast a Zoom meeting. Um, and want, it, want to know if they're missing anything. Also, is there a way to easily resize the application window and screen sharing? Um, yeah, it's a little weird. Like, when you're screen sharing a window, you need to actually resize that window that you're sharing to be the same shape as your broadcast, or else it's never going to like fill your screen, right? So the key for that is if you are sharing, for example, Zoom's main window, you want to make sure that window is shaped like your broadcast. So grab the corner of that Zoom window, resize it to be roughly 16 by 9 is the ratio you want, and then you'll see that that will come in and zoom in. If it's not quite cropped the way you want it, you can zoom in on what you're sharing in Ecamm Live. And you can do that by just doing the pinch gesture on the, on that, on the main window of Ecamm Live or using the little plus and minus buttons at the bottom, and, and then you can pan around and you can make sure that your screen sharing looks just right. Right, Ken? Am I leaving anything oh, yeah. there? Um, uh, basically, a lot of people don't know about this kind of hidden feature, but when you use our screen sharing feature to share a window of another app, you can zoom in on that and move around the view. So let's say you're trying to show somebody um, a video that you're playing in a browser window, and you pick an Ecamm Live to share that browser window, and that comes up. You can um, zoom in on that, and there's some different ways to do that. If you're on a computer with a trackpad or a magic mouse, you can do a two-finger, um, uh, I never know what to call it, reverse pinch. <laughs> what does Apple call it? A spread? Pinch, pinch zoom, spread, I don't and, know. Yeah, like, like you're zooming in on an iPhone. 
and it will zoom in on that window. And then to move it around, you can do a two-finger drag, and that will pan uh, the window around. And it's really nice to be able to just get it right to where you want it. And that, that spot will get saved as part of your scene so that you can, you can set that up in advance. So if you're sharing Zoom's window to bring a Zoom conference into Ecamm Live, you don't want the um, edges, right? Because the the, there's the buttons the and there's the um, crowd on the sides. So if you just zoom in a little bit, you can, you can crop out those edge buttons. And yeah, that's I a think, great way. I think we did fix some weirdness in the, in the latest version. Um, before, it was kind of bringing in, like, if you click the menu in Zoom, it would, that menu could become, like, part of your stream. Uh, we fixed that so it will no, no longer broadcast the little um, little menus and stuff that might pop up in your Zoom call. It'll just broadcast that, that main window if that's what you have picked. Um, I think another great question from Matteo, this, this idea of sharing a PDF. If you haven't tried this, you can bring in a multi-page PDF into Ecamm Live and then move through the pages of the PDF with the arrow keys or by clicking the little arrows on the, on the overlay. And, um, but one of the weird things about this is, say you want your PDF in two different scenes. Um, since the overlays in each scene are independent from each other, you could like go to page four on one scene, and then you go to your next scene, and you're back on page one. So there really, really isn't an amazing way right now to kind of have a PDF that lives in multiple scenes. But what you can do is take the PDF and put it in the Show in All Scenes section of your overlays. If you haven't seen this, take a look in your overlays window. And at the top, there's two sections. There's show in all scenes and show in current scene. So you can grab that PDF, drag it up to show in all scenes, and now it's not in any scenes at all. It's just always going to show. So you're going to have to show it and hide it manually. But what that's going to let you do is stay on the same page throughout. So now you're in charge of showing it when you need it. But it has that advantage of staying on the same page. So many feature requests today. We love to see this. Uh, this is a question people, about people preview say. scenes. And this is something that we're also, we've been, we've been working on. And we got it working nicely, where you'll be able to go into an edit mode and just make all the changes you want to your stream. And then when you're ready, you hit publish, and, it, and those, those changes happen. So for example, right now, if I want to kind of rearrange my screen, like say, well, maybe this is going to go up here, and maybe I want to move these over. You see me doing that all in real time. And that's just kind of the way we designed Ecamm Live from the get-go, was that what you see is what you get, and everything is live. But it's also nice to be able to kind of make those little changes behind the scenes so that people don't see you adjusting things. And then when you're ready, punch it live, and all those changes happen at once, whether it's switching camera, setting up a whole new mode, moving overlays. That can happen offline and then be put live um, all at once. It's not in the program yet. It's not in the beta yet, but it's coming really soon. I feel like I say that a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that yet. Tons of feature requests coming in Which uh, is really fun. today. Yeah. Um, we have had some questions on the community about the recordings that Ecamm Lab makes. Um, there's a little bit of uh, confusion. and. It is uh, legitimate and honestly confusing. So I'm not blaming anybody who's confused. Um, but if you didn't know, Ecamm Live makes recordings of all your lives on your, on your disk. Um, uh, by default, automatically, everything you do is going to get recorded, which is awesome, because you can do stuff with that file later. Um, edit it down, save it for posterity, share it with your guests. Um, we have always been doing this. And um, basically, it's, it's not a big drain on the system's resources, because we're already compressing this, the audio and the video to send it up to the internet for your live stream. So what we do is we just take that same compressed audio and video and put it to disk inside a movie file. Um, so it, it doesn't use, someone was asking me yesterday, is, is, this, is this draining a lot of my system's resources? Should I turn this off to? to try to save power. No, the, 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 there's actually not using up that much computer power, because we're already doing 99% of the work. The last step is just to write that into a file on disk. You can turn it off. In the record menu in the menu bar, there's a record all broadcasts checkbox that you can turn off. And then if that's off, 
you have the ability to manually stop and start um, recordings. Um, and uh, as long as your disk doesn't fill up, this is a cool feature. Now, last month, we noticed a weird issue where um, some apps, like Final Cut Pro and iMovie, were uh, having some sound issues when, when our recordings got played back in them. It was, not, it was fine in other apps, but for some reason, Apple's right. editing software was making weird clicking sounds when you played back our movies. Research determined that it was because um, the files were actually uh, named wrong. We we've always been making uh, QuickTime movies. QuickTime movies is a is a is a QuickTime file is a container format. So we take the video that we encode for the live stream, H.264 video AAC audio for the nerds out there, and we dump it into this container file, and that's your movie. Um, we were um, naming the file incorrectly as a .mp4 file. Um, the two formats are extremely similar, so most programs didn't have any problem with it. Actually, nobody had any problem with it, except Final Cut Pro and iMovie, which caused clicking noises. Um, we were quite surprised when we realized that the, the name was wrong, and if we just named the files correctly as .mov files, that uh, the, the problem completely went away. Hmm. That caused okay. some issues for some customers who were uploading that clip to like places where they didn't allow .mov files. Um, but um, I guess naming it back to an MP4 is, is a good fix. Uh, we had some customers, though, who were, were swearing up and down that, that um, we had changed something fundamental about the files and they were different. Uh, that they were bigger now or smaller now or, or um, that they were confused um, about that, but we didn't actually change anything about what's in the file at all, um, except the uh, format is now, um, whatever the, for the name is now different. And uh, um, if you see the, that your movies are different sizes or unpredictable sizes, that's part of the nature of H.264 encoding. It uses oh, a method. Not plugged in. It's a temporal encoding method. Temporal encoding means that uh, the 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 video is going to take up more space and require more bandwidth if there's motion in the shot. So you can test this out. If you do a recording and you're not in front of your camera, you just record your wall for an, for an hour, and then um, aim the camera at. Um, something that's moving in it at your television or something, and then record for an hour, you'll see that the um, files will be dramatically different sizes. And AAC audio works the same way. If you record silence and then look at how for an hour and then look at the size of that file, and then you record music for an hour, those files are going to be different uh, sizes dramatically. So if you're noticing differences in the sizes of your recordings, it, it probably is because of what's in the recording. Um, just a little technical yeah, note. Yeah, I've there. seen some, uh, since, and we also, since we, re we record that variable bitrate, I've seen some um, some files where it's just like a, a like a big church um, sanctuary where nothing is moving, and it's just like this tiny little but a bit of bandwidth is needed because really nothing's changing on the screen. Very interesting. But then you cut to some pre-recorded movie of like cameras moving around, and suddenly suddenly the bandwidth will go up. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, it seems like most people have joined back up with us after that little crash. Now I'm afraid to do any demo, any screen sharing demos, though. I've turned off system audio, so I'm thinking that maybe that would fix it, but I don't know if I want to risk done. the app crashing again. Uh, we'll, we'll get right on that. Um, Brian's asking about the Elgato Stream Deck app, um, and if will they do an iPad version? I didn't realize that there was no iPad version. So it's just the phone version that scales up. That's kind of lame. That'd be, that would be a good idea. I don't really have any insight into that. But if you haven't checked out Elgato's Stream Deck app, it is cool. Basically it turns your phone into a little control pad for your Ecamm Live. You can fire off sound effects, um, uh, change scenes, hide and show overlays, uh, roll movie clips. It is awesome. So you're not using your 
keyboard and mouse during your show, you're just hitting buttons on the Stream Deck. Now, there's a question about Stream Deck like in the comments now, actually. Someone's like, um, I see that there's a hide last comment button, but is there a show most recent comment button on the Stream Deck? Show most think? recent? No, I see. Yeah, this is an interesting one, because we've had a lot of requests for, like, what's an easier way for me to bring comments into the, into the broadcast? Now, right now, we just have this window of, that just shows all the comments that are coming in. So there can't really be a Stream Deck button to bring a comment in, unless it's, like, Unless, like you said in the comment, it's like the latest comment. But you know, comments could be coming in all the time, so you don't really know if a comment's going to be coming in like as you press the button. But what we really would like to be adding is the idea of comment moderation. So, where there, so it could be you or someone else who is curating the list of the comments that are coming in and just kind of moving them into another tab that's kind of a queue of the comments you want to talk about. And then at that point, we could have a button that says, Okay, now cycle to the next comment in your in your um, your moderated comments. Uh, but right now we don't have anything like that because, like as you can see, like Ken and I are just looking through this giant list of comments, and and um, there's no way to kind of mark them to come back to them later. So uh, something yeah, that we need it, to improve for sure. Absolutely, that could be a whole tool, comment moderation tool. Um, so Ken, before we forget, should we talk a little bit about virtual cameras? Ooh, let's talk about virtual cameras. They're our favorite. They're our favorite thing this week. <laughs> so yeah. we'll make this. We'll make this a really short story. Um, virtual cameras are plugins for on your Mac, right? And they look like cameras to your apps. So, for example, if you go into an app that does video and you go to their preferences, usually there's a place where you can pick what camera you want to use, and it will list out your built-in camera. It will list, say you have a Logitech plugged in, it will list out that. But what a virtual camera lets you do is say is have a plug-in that pretends to be a camera and lets you pipe that video into your app. Now, this is a really cool idea, and Ecamm was one of the first people in, in this space with our eyeglasses plug-in that lets you do things like adjust the color and the focus and, and, um, and roll pre-recorded videos into your, into your broadcast. We also have a virtual camera in Ecamm Live that will let you send the output of your Ecamm Live broadcast to um, any app. Now, meanwhile, unfortunately, Apple added security features to Mac OS that made it so that um, as time goes on, more and more apps exclude virtual cameras from loading. Uh, we first saw this with Apple apps, like Safari. If you try a virtual camera in Safari, no go. Nothing in, in FaceTime, nothing in, um, in um, photo, booth. Any photo booth, any Apple app. Um, that's been, it's been like that for a while. But unfortunately, now, meanwhile, yeah, people have been really jumping on virtual cameras because it's, a, it's an awesome way to bring uh, things into your Zoom call or your Skype call. Now that we're all spending all day on Zoom call, if you could, it would be nice to be able to bring your DSLR into Zoom or bring in um, a logo or bring in uh, some, some um, to ro uh, roll a movie into Zoom. And a so lot of companies have really, been really getting been in on this, right? Go ahead. A lot of companies have been getting in on this, right? We oh, saw yeah. virtual okay. cameras released in the past couple weeks from Canon, uh, from New Tech for NDI. Uh, there's so many virtual cameras now. Snapcam. Don't forget Snap. about Snapcam. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to load that up. That'll just crash everything. But anyway, what we saw happen about a month and a half ago already is that Zoom posted an update that excludes virtual cameras. And what happened on Monday of this week is that Skype posted an update that does not allow virtual cameras. So where does this leave us? Right, so this is something that we have, um, we're looking into. We have various workarounds posted on our website for how to get a virtual camera into Zoom and, and Skype, um, and we're also hoping that those companies will have some sort of resolution uh, up their sleeve as well. Right, Ken? Yeah, I mean, right now, virtual cameras still work in Chrome. So a lot of people are using it to bring um, video into their WebEx or their Google Hangout or whatever they're, whatever they're doing in Chrome. 
But um, in order to use it in Skype and Zoom, in the latest version of Skype and Zoom. First ever super chat. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We'd like to thank the producers. We'd like to thank the, the actors. And all of you for giving us our, our 4,000 watch hours this month, which allowed us to monetize the channel and get Super Chats. Nice. So thank you. We're all, we're all we're in not... it together. <laughs> Sweet. So, so what yeah, I just so, saying? So oh, yeah. John in order to use the virtual camera virtual cameras in, in Facebook rooms. It's cool. What? Facebook rooms. It's the new thing. What is it? Facebook rooms is Facebook's version of Zoom. Oh. Which Everyone, actually, Zoom was yeah. just so well positioned for this pandemic, and everybody's just trying to be like late to the party. And be like, oh, we have video chatting for meetings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rooms is cool. If you haven't checked out Facebook Rooms, it's integrated into Messenger pretty well. And nice. apparently still works with virtual cameras, as does Google Meet, anything in Chrome, like Hangouts or. Um, However, though, so it's worth mentioning, if you want to use virtual cameras in Skype and Zoom and you're on the latest versions, there are workarounds. There are simple workarounds that involve um, a simple command um, on the command line that um, basically says, you know what, we want to be able to load third-party plugins into this app. Um, once you make that command, um, it'll all come back to normal. If you update Zoom or Skype again, you'll have to make that command again because the new version that you updated to will again be blocking um, blocking plugins. Yeah, um, and um, we, this is this is a common question that comes up a lot from Charles. Um, he tried virtual camera with Microsoft Teams, and when he's looking at his video in Teams, he's seeing that everything is flipped around, and this is super confusing, but very simple once you figure out what's happening. Um, a lot of the times when an app shows you your own camera, it will mirror it so that when you put up your left hand, you see it go up on the left because that's what people are used to seeing. But usually when you see, if, when you see yourself on, taking a selfie on the front camera of your phone, it's mirrored. Um, but, and here's the kicker, just completely ignore that. Don't try to mirror, don't try to fix anything because that's just what it's showing you. Your audience the people on your Teams call are going to see you completely normal. It's only that preview window in the app that's showing you your own image mirrored, and you can completely ignore that and just tell yourself, OK, it's not going to be mirrored for anyone else. Zoom, I believe, has a checkbox for this. Other apps, well, Zoom has a checkbox for everything. So, <laughs> But other apps, if you see yourself mirrored, don't worry. The other people will not see you mirrored at all. And it, it, it can be especially confusing if there's text in your shot. Um, and if, if you don't believe us, hold up some text in your shot and then watch your stream and you will see that it is the right way and not backwards like uh, you're seeing it in the preview. Um, I have had some requests from yoga teachers to be able to see a mirrored preview. Oh, interesting. Because um, they're, um, they're, they're, they're used to looking in... Um, Oh, people doing yoga are used to looking in a mirror and seeing. Well, we do have we do have teachers a are, are used to see. so I can mirror you. Yeah, and... teachers are used to actually seeing. Can you imagine? You know that the dance teachers are, are saying like, "Now put up your left leg, left leg." They're actually doing their right leg, or else everyone in the class would fall over. That's confusing. So yeah. I just I just mirrored you, Ken, and I think it looks better. What do people? You think? mirrored me. Yeah, you're mirrored now. See? Put it back. Oh, you're pretty symmetrical. Wait, hold on. You're a very symmetrical person. Your head's crooked. Right now. You are. Right. Your nose is exactly in the middle. My ears are at different heights, though. Most people don't know this about me. Your head is tilted. Nope. My ears are just at different heights. All right. Enough of that. Um, so all this, all this great stuff about virtual cameras. What does it mean? Um, the situation is evolving. Virtual cameras are still cool. Unfortunately, it seems like they are um, showing up in less and less apps, unless Apple can change this. Um, th what we're really seeing here is an architecture problem with macOS and how they handle virtual cameras in general. Uh, it would be awesome if Apple could fix this. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, 
what we are hoping for is maybe some sort of fix from Zoom in the next couple weeks, uh, because we have heard rumblings about that. And uh, I know that anyone who wants, any software company that wants to keep up with Zoom, once Zoom does that, hopefully will follow suit and find some way to allow virtual cameras um, in their apps. But yeah, but just to reiterate what Glenda said, key. What, just to reiterate what Glenda said, this is, this is a, a actually a, a shortcoming um, in, in Mac OS. This is a shortcoming of Apple's OS. Um, developers of apps should not have to choose between virtual cameras and, um, and turning on maximum security in their apps. There should be a secure way to uh, have virtual cameras um, that Apple could easily do if they want if they got around to it. Um, so I'm going to blame I'm going to put the blame back on Apple and so not. Um, this is something that we had other reports of, unless it was also um, Fabian. Um, so when you remove one of these workarounds is removing Zoom's code signature, and apparently it has some side effects. Uh, Fabian saying that once you do this, you can't use their screen sharing feature anymore, which would be quite unfortunate. Um, so maybe some other people can check that out and confirm. What um, might be happening is that um, you may have to grant permission for it to share the screen again. Um, it, yeah. That code signature is what it was using to track the permissions that you gave it. So this, after you, what, when you open Zoom the next time, you should be prompted again to allow camera, to allow mic, and to allow screen sharing. Um, I'd be really surprised if the screen sharing uh, went away. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, there might be a helper process doing that that maybe won't, isn't loading anymore or something. I don't know. Mm, uh, I don't know. Anyway, just these comments, all these great questions, and, and so many awesome feature requests. Basically, just so you guys know, like, basically 99% of all the feature requests that come in. We have it in this big, awesome list, and really think it's also a really amazing idea. And we just like nothing more than to add it to the app. And we're just trying to prioritize things and make sure we get the most important features in as soon as we can. And um, this guest feature that we're using now is going. It was was targeted for um, March, April. Uh, things didn't quite go as planned, but it is coming along really nicely. We've got, uh, we've like like we said at the beginning of the of the broadcast, we've got our um, we've got our green room, we've got our multiple guests. It's all coming through. Ken, what are you using, Chrome or Safari, to join the call? Wait, where's your sound? Ken? Kenny? What did I click? I jinxed it. <laughs> it might be problem. Oh wait, mine. you're back. You're back. What about now? I can hear you. What, what did you? Okay, do? sorry. I, I opened up Zoom and it screwed it up. But so I was just checking for Fabian. Um, yeah, if if your if your screen sharing has gone away in Zoom, go to the security and privacy preferences. Go to privacy, find uh, screen recording. Scroll down to Zoom and uncheck the box and recheck the box. And that should that should put the um, the security back into the um, screen sharing. Hmm, that's confusing. Um, yeah. And I is. think it seems like the workaround you can do a similar workaround for Skype that does not actually have any of those weird side effects, as far as we can tell, right, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't just try to change the word Zoom to the word Skype in the workaround you used Zoom. Go to our article. Um, it's a little bit different of a command. Um, and um, Skype will see your virtual camera again. Are you adjusting my color balance? Yeah, I am. I was trying to make you look. I was trying to match our skin tones. You want to push all the you, buttons. Even though you usually are a little little darker tan than I, I than me, I'm trying to just balance it out a little bit. This you, is this you're is kind of a neat thing a you can do in, e, in eCam Live. You can um, since the, since the guests come in the same as cameras, you can actually green screen the other person. You can adjust their color and their and their uh, their temperature and their saturation, just it looks nice when everyone matches up, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Sure, Glenn. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about today? Alex Alex is asking about the um, 
yeah, if you go to our, our support section, there is an article on, um, on getting Skype um, unsigned as well. Um, Katie can post a, post a link to that. But if you just search for um, why our virtual camera is missing from Skype on our support page, it should come up. And uh, it, it, it's, it's just the sa basically the same process, just a different command that you can use. Gwen is wondering why it sounds like I'm sitting in a server room with lots of fans running. Um, that's just my computer fan. I'm using the built-in microphone. I know that's a that's a um, rookie mistake, but I didn't bring a good microphone with me. I don't, um, I don't hear that in my ear because I think that this is um, noise canceling, hmm. and it's taking out any sort of a hum. So you sound fine for me. Yeah. Um, Primo's asking, why do computers go into buffer mode so much? What are the fixes? I'm not, I'm not sure what exactly what you're talking about. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what buffer mode is. Um, well, I, I mean, in, in, in live streaming parlance, buffering usually means um, if the stream is not coming through uh, fast enough, if the, if the bandwidth is too low, then uh, to the viewers, the image will appear to stop for a second while, while, the, mm. while the, um, the player is waiting for more data to come through. So it's adding a little bit of a pause, and then hopefully we'll catch back up. And what's happening yeah. on, the, on the, the broadcast side is it's saying, OK, I'm not able to send this data fast enough. I'm just going to kind of put it in a buffer. And when I do have enough bandwidth, I'm going to send it later. So that's where that, where that term idea of buffering comes in. If you have good bandwidth, you should have no buffering at all. Everything should just be flowing through smoothly, and there, there should be no buffer. Um, if I were to right now re go up to my menu bar and change Wi-Fi networks, that's going to cut my internet completely for like 10 seconds, right? So if you were to watch the, watch the network, you would see Ecamm Live say, oh, I can't send anything, and my audio and video is going to start buffering on the Mac. And then when the, video, when the connection comes back, it's like, oh, I got a, a connection now, and it's gonna, it'll start streaming again. That was buffering, and um, the audience, what they would see is we basically freeze for a couple seconds. So if you are seeing something that you um, think may be buffering, um, get in touch with us. We can take a look at your logs, and usually we can see whether it's an issue with your internet speed or, or not. Yeah, the pro version has that um, the bandwidth monitor window. It shows you how much is buffered and shows you your bandwidth and also an estimate of how much bandwidth is required at the moment. And if those two things are not in sync, um, you're going to have uh, issues. We have a question from, from Pete here. Who um, This is a really good one. I would like to see this in the app, too. But right now, if you ever tried adjusting the picture settings in camera effects, you'll find that they're actually not specific to the scene. Um, it's just specific to your camera. Um, globally, and the thought there was like, if you adjust your color balance, you want it for your whole show. You don't want it for just one scene. So that's why that's a global setting. But there are these cool, such cool use cases that we're, I've, I've seen the same thing, where like, you might want a scene where you're, where you're black and white, and a scene where you're not, and there's no way to do that right now. So something to think about in the user interface: how can we make it so that certain settings are certain picture settings are just for your for what's seen because most things are right i can have a scene with a different green screen backdrop or a different zoom level like i might want i might have a scene where ken is bigger or smaller or floating or floating or i might have a scene where you have um or i have a different green screen backdrop but yeah there's no way to do that right now hopefully one of these days we can get that in there All right, I feel like we're missing so many of these awesome questions, but. Yeah, um, someone asked a great, it might be a great conclusion question here. Um, I lost it now, but the idea was, uh, what, are your, what are your hopes and dreams for Ecamm Live? What are we, what, what, what's our, um, what's what our ultimate What are our hopes goal? and dreams? Yeah, me and you. I thought you'd never ask. Um, 
Our, my hope see. is to get this, the guest feature and multi-streaming out. Yeah. And in the, in the hands of our users because it is really cool. Yeah, and um, there's and a bunch of other. to get a super chat. <laughs> there's a lot of other cool things that will be in that release too. Um, improvements behind the scenes that were necessary for those other features to happen. Um, so just uh, stay stay with us. Stay on the latest version. Um, keep keep sending those those um, st customer stories about how you're using the app. Um, we we love hearing your feature requests. We we don't um, we don't want you to stop sending those. Um, just know that we have a lot of them, and um, we we may be able to add little things in quick, but but um, other things take more more resources. We know that um, what we have in there is impressive, and uh, our list of features we want to add is even more impressive though. It's it's many pages long. So um, we're looking forward to hearing more about um, new things Facebook is doing. If you if you want to get the scoop on that, tune into John Eric's uh, stream. I'm sure he's got the got the scoop on that. Uh, yeah, John yeah. Eric, tell us. We want to know more about the stars, the Facebook stars. How that worked out for you? I yeah, know that was like several months ago. With that, but we've kind of been out of the loop. Yeah, and John, yeah, he says he will send some. Uh, we want to see, we want to see the good, the goods. This, the, the new Facebook features are so cool. And this Facebook really is innovating um, in their live streaming the last um, six months or so. I feel like they were kind of like put live streaming on a shelf somewhere for a couple of years, and then um, really started revving it up even before the coronavirus. Um, they were starting to really gear up. Um, their live streaming game, adding the, adding stars, adding um, pay, you know, pay to view features, all this cool stuff. Um, it'll be really exciting to see what they come up with and how they take it to the next level. And the same with YouTube. I mean, if you've seen the new YouTube studio, it's a lot better than what they had before, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, you're not seeing the same amount of innovation there as far as the features, but they clearly have a team working to make their live streaming experience a lot better. So how's my sync looking today, Glenn? Last time we tried What's the guest feature, we were I having sync seen... issues. I think I fixed it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, now you've got a new crash to fix. All right. Yeah. Should we? Uh, should we wrap this up, Ken? Yeah. Let's peace let's out. Get back to coding. Yeah. Yeah, let, let, should we go back to working on this guest feature? Yeah, and Doc is saying the sync is clean. I'm really happy with how we're not using any mic delay today. It's just coming straight from the Canon over USB. And uh, it, it's really nice and synced, and the quality is great. So so we're, we're psyched. We're All psyched. right. All right. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next month where... Hopefully, this feature will be in beta. Right, Ken? Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's go out on some, uh, some of that awesome music, shall we? Yeah. Thanks for joining okay. us, everyone. Thanks for the super chats. Bye.